So in my previous video series of this one, exporting Power BI report in using Power Automate, then there was an option of filtering and then export the report. So it was not there uh, in my video series. And now I have added that if you see this one, if I export this option and click on this button run flow, then this will send an email like this. And if I open up this one, then I can able to see the filters, whatever I have applied here, North and West year is 2021 and everything is filtered to this one. So this was a new updates on my video series of this one and still a lot more to come on this series. If you are new to this channel or if you haven't subscribed yet, just click on the subscribe button and also press the bell icon to get the latest notifications. Now let's get started. So in order to work on this flow, the best idea is you need to work inside your Power BI report itself. So the reason is because whatever the field which you are going to add inside to this one, let's say for an example, if I click on this one, I have added the region and transaction year here. So this value is being passed through this flow if you are editing inside to Power BI Desktop. If you are working on a separate in Power Automate, then these fields are not going to carry forward. So you will have some issues with that. So I just use this one Power Automate Visual from Power BI Visual Icons and here I'm going to select this one and click on this icon and click on edit. So this will open up this Power Automate user interface inside to this Power BI itself. You can do this same process using Power BI Desktop or also in Power BI Service. So I have just a small table here, region, sales and transaction year. I have drag and drop this region and transaction year because I want to pass through this value in uh, my visual. So I added these two in the filter pane region and transaction year because I want to get this value in my Power Automate flow. So this is the flow which I have added here and I'm going to click on edit here. So if you want to know about how we need to add this flow from the beginning, I recommend you to please go and check out my previous video series of this one. So you will get a lot of things to learn about that. And uh, here you will get these options and after that on a power BI button click, nothing is here. And after that I need to add a few variables here because I need to capture the values from the region and transaction year slicer. So I'm initiating a region variable, giving a date name here variable 6 and this is a string and no initial value here so apply to each region so here i am going to apply this value as a loop here the reason is because if the user selects multiple selections then it has to consider the multiple selection as well so here is also a challenge about that um, the reason is because i'm appending this this into another variable so if you are confused about that, so let me just add one parallel action so that you can aware of this thing here. So I'm clicking on this plus icon here and then click on add a parallel branch. And after that, I'm going to add a variable here, variable. And first of all, we need to initiate a variable. So initialize variable, giving it name here, demo region. And here we need to select this data type. I'm selecting a string here, no initial value. That's totally fine, which is not mandatory here. And after that, I'm going to add an action here, which is basically again the variable part. And here I need to select append two string variables. So it's not an array, it's a string variable. Here I'm going to select this demo region. And under the value, if you click on that, you will get a list of available options here. So we need to select from this one. And here we have a lot of options, user ID, name, email ID. These are the default things. And here timestamp. Power BI data region and here Power BI data item and also Power BI data transaction year, Power BI data. As we are capturing Power BI data region, this is the slicer value coming up here. So I'm selecting on this one and automatically it adds a loop here, apply to each Power BI data region and append this variable here. So the value is being captured in this one. So now what will happen for this one is basically, let me open a notepad. So this is basically adding, for example, north, comma, north, south, east. 
if the user select three of this region north south and east it adds like this so basically we don't need this one actually the parameter how we need to pass is this uh, apostrophe and then north and then comma and then south and then east so if we pass the value like this then only it is going to accept on that so for that what we need to do here we need to add one first of here and also here and at the end we need to add a comma here so here that's the thing so now the challenge of this one is what happen is it automatically adds this one uh, apostrophe and then again here end here and then comma so even it will also apply the same thing at the last here but if you pass this value with a comma here at the end we will not going to get the same result so we need to reduce this avoid this comma here in order to do that we need to add another variable and then we need to do a few steps so which is basically i will come back here the first of all we need to get the length of this variable so whatever the value the user has selected we need to get the length and then i am going to capture minus 1 here i will tell you the reason behind that so if i go into this one expressions let me zoom this here this again the same thing here i am have added a new variable initialize variable like how we did it here and this is also type of string and i'm going to add here the length of this is basically the variable 6 which is the first variable here and variable 6 here and i will get this length of this width and after that i'm going to add value which is minus 1 here so basically for an example if i get a value of 16 i will get the value here 15 because i am just using it minus 1 here so it will reduce one value here the reason is because i want to use the substring thing so that's the reason i'm going to use the minus 1 here and after that i have added one more initializing variable here which is a variable final and this is also a string variable and inside to that i use a substring function so if i go down here this is a substring one so this is substring and then we need to pass a variable and the variable will be like this here for an example if i open up this one north south east here and then with the comma which is basically if i count this value here 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 14 14 and 15 so let's say for an example we have this up to here 15 digits here this is 15 and now the length what we have calculated is here 15 minus 1 so 15 minus 1 this will be like 14 the length of this variable so you, i'm using the substring function substring is basically this variable and it starts from zero here and how much i need to reduce that i mean how much i need to take that from zero i need to take the variable of length which is obviously in this example uh, i'm using substring substring which is a variable 6 and it start from zero till 14 here So basically, what will happen is this will start from this location, uh, and then this will go to this stage up to this one. So this this will capture this value in a separate variable. So if you notice one thing, I just use int here. The reason is because the variable, the variable length which I have added here, it's actually a string. So in order to work on the substring function, we need to convert this in string into an integer. So that's the reason I use integer here. Okay. So now we have this. variable here so where final which is for the region and the same process i have applied also for the year also initializing a variable and then adding this year into a loop here and after that i am taking the length of this variable and after that i am using the substring to reduce the comma and finally i am using another variable in order to merge everything into one so basically what is the process is i made a separate video previously about Uh, how to pass the url parameters into your report so the same logic applies here um so we need to use the same terminology which is basically the region sales is nothing but the table name and slash which is a region is a column name and in is an operator and then i mean need to pass that value inside a bracket here um i will also try to add the link of that video in the description below please go and check out that video also in order to understand how these things works and also there is a documentation available there if you want to pass a single value how you can do that if you want to pass a date how you need to use that in this area right okay so after that i am going to add multiple parameter right so i need to add and region since is again is the table name and slash the tran year is a column name in this year 
and now finally I need to use this export to file for Power BI reports. If I add this, it's asking for me to add the workspace name and then I need to select the report name and the format I need to add here and the hidden pages to include is no. If there is any bookmark, then we can add that here. If nothing is here, then we can add this variable, the last variable which is included of everything, year and the region, we can add here as a report level filter in the variable section. After that, no need to add anything here and at the end, we need to add an email notification. If you want to add an email notification, you can do that. If you want to save it into a SharePoint, you can also do that. And if I expand this one, then we need to pass the email ID here and the subject here and also the body of this message. If you want to add, you can add something here. And at the end here, you need to add the attachment, which is basically this. If you click here, then you will come up here. And here you need to add the file content, which will again, it will convert into your body by default and then we need to give it a name for this one so by doing everything here and then we need to finally click on on the top save and apply on the top right so that it will save and apply these logics here and then you need to click on back to report so if you come up here this will be like this let me just clear everything from here right and then you need to save this report and I'm going back to reading view. So this is the one which I have added. Let me reset everything. Now I'm going to select one value here, which is East and let the year to be 2022 for an example. And I'm going to click on run flow. So this is triggering now and hopefully I will get an email within a few seconds. Yeah, I have received this email now. And if I select on the PDF here, so this is the older one and if I click on the new one, yes, if I zoom here, I got the value of East and which is 2022. If I go back to my selection, which is East and 2022 and now they exported also which is the East and 2022 here. So that's really awesome. So this is how you can able to pass your slicer selections into your report and export your report based on that. If you like this video, just click on the big thumbs up button. If you are new to this channel or if you haven't subscribed yet, just click on the subscribe button and also press the bell icon to get the latest notifications. But make sure you turn on the notification on your devices. Share it with your friends and colleagues. If you have any queries and feedback, just post it on the comment section below. Thanks for watching. Keep learning. See you in the next video.